What's up, guys? I'm Emerald Marie, and be sure to check us out on the web at realfansrealtalk.com. Uh huh. This is Real Fans Real Talk. Talk. Real Fans Real Talk. We as real as you thought. Real Fans Real Talk. We the illest of course. Real Fans Real Talk. We the illest of course. Real Fans Real Talk. We as real as you thought. Real Fans Real Talk. Reporting live from the cam. High in demand. So please stand by if you can. What we got is worth a lot. So put a tie on your plans. On court. Talk of sports through the eyes of the fans. With Trip Young, Emerald Marie, Eric Sanchez. You heard what I said, we elite. Check the latest topics and stay ahead of the beat. Keep us in your topics and uh -huh. we ahead of the Yo. streets. It's Johnny Floss, bringing a different type of blend. Backing up Misfit to make sure y'all tuned in. You gotta watch, this show is one of a kind. Updates on your TV screen from 8 to 9. For the older folks, so even if you're younger, no matter what sport, this show, we got it covered. It's filmed live in the middle of BK, so we no better sports show to watch on Thursdays. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Fans Real Talk, but back with our quarantine edition interviews. And uh, last week, you guys know we had uh, OG King, general manager and the head coach of the Nets uh, gaming crew uh, of the NBA uh, 2K League. This week, we have a very special guest, my little sister, uh, Don Shea Hopkins. She is, uh, you guys, uh, she's probably one of the biggest child stars uh, on the planet. Uh, no, more, more specifically known for her work as uh, Raina St. Patrick, a.k.a. Ghost Daughter on Power, um, but she was also uh, featured on Orange is the New Black. Uh, she's also uh, on uh, the, the Detour as well. And um, you might know her as uh, Bobby Christina because she did play uh, Bobby and uh, Whitney's daughter in the Bobby Brown story uh, that aired on um, on BET. Um, Actually, award-winning uh, Bobby Brown story. I should say that now because they uh, they definitely got an award for the uh, for the film as well. So congrats uh, on that. But uh, Dante, <laughs> what's going mm -hmm. on, man? Um, just trying to survive this thing that's happening. <laughs> Tell us uh, how um, the coronavirus has affected Hollywood. I mean, I know everything is kind of shut down. Mm -hmm. except for maybe like a few smaller like independent people but as far as Hollywood goes everything is pretty much on lock right now yeah basically like Hollywood is really like never shut down like anyone who's like in the industry knows that so to be shut down to like this extent is crazy but we're not like fully shut down we just like can't go in and do auditions we can't like go on set and work but we can do stuff from home we, like we can do interviews like I'm doing now. We can do self-tape auditions where we basically tape inside our home, send it to the casting. Um, I know writers are really happy because a lot of writers like to be to themselves. I can speak from personal experience and like like to get their writing on. So we're definitely going to get some great shows out of this. It's going to be an amazing pilot season next year. I know that for sure. Um, but yeah, it's very, it's very different. But I feel like it's also bringing out a lot of creative sides to many people, like not just with actors and actresses, but with singers and songwriters too, and um, photographers like yourself and videographers and content creators too. We've been able to do tons of stuff. So um, knock on invisible wood right now. I'm glad to be multifaceted and do different things because right now I've been like vlogging and doing like YouTube videos. Um, I've been doing like many photo shoots. I'm not trying to steal your job, but I've been doing like <laughs> many photo shoots in my living room. So yeah, so it's been in writing, like I said, writing shows and movies. So, so far, so good. We're not completely shut down. Um, but we are, like I said, we are shut down to an extent, but we'll be back soon and we're going to be better than ever. You got the inside scoop on when Hollywood is going to open back up or is it just Basically, whenever the government says, you know, the, the states are open back up. <laughs> I don't. I think no one has the answer because, like, it's not just here. Like, mostly when people think about film, they 
think of like North America, like they think of like America, like New York, LA, Chicago, or Atlanta, or like Canada, like Toronto, or um, Quebec, or Ontario. But um, it's so global. And I think that's the scary thing is like, we take really like all over the world. So there is no set date to when anything is going to open. Um, so we really just plan it day by day right now. Um, but hopefully it'll be soon. But honestly, speaking from a scientific point, I don't think we're going to be back into like October, if I'm being like 100% honest. How do you think uh, the film process itself will change now, you know, after the coronavirus and just, you know, seeing how easily spread, you know, this mm-hmm. virus was? How do you mm-hmm. think uh, that will, will affect the actual film f- process? I think people are going to be a little bit more cautious on set. I know, like, I'm I'm already cautious, like, when I go on set, like, when I go into my dressing room, depending on where I am or my trailer, um, you know, my mom is a germaphobic, so we, like, wipe everything down and kind of disinfect. But I think, um, but for the most part, sets are, like, super duper clean. Like, as soon as something is used, they throw it right in the garbage. So I think that um, people will just be a little more cautious. Um, people will kind of keep a, dis- a safe distance when talking to people because usually on set everyone is so close together because everything is so rush, 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 rush and you have to do like scenes like really fast paced and get things going and then you have to consult with people so I think things are probably going to slow down a little bit when, when everything does go back. It's going to be a rush but it's going to be like a slowed down rush. Um, everyone's going to like, like I said, take their time, be a little bit more cautious, wash their hands even more. Um, I know it's going to be really hard for wardrobe and hair and makeup. They're probably going to have to do like extra precautions. So yeah, it's definitely going to change things around a lot. And there's probably going to be new shooting styles, like getting different angles because people, I think, honestly, I know I'm going to be scared when I go back to work. So I can only imagine how everyone else is going to be there. They're probably going to just like shoot it shot by shot. Like, hey, we'll just do your scene and you guys are going to be like this far apart. And it's all, it's all going to be like angles when we get back. So it's- At least, at least, at least for, the, for, for the first, like, I guess, couple of months yeah, before, me, yeah. you know, going back in. Because I was just thinking even, you know, as far as, you know, when things open back up, I don't see people just rushing back to movie yeah. theaters and, you yeah, know, me, concerts. Yeah, and um and and things like that um just because you know people i think just the, the fear people you know won't really just be like oh all right let's just jump back in i think right. it's going to take a, a little bit of uh, more time hey M, M just uh just logged in okay. we, we, we 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 had we had, to, we had to get things going because even though you know hollywood is closed john shay she still got a crazy schedule so we had to wrap right. things up sorry i'm late i was rushing home from work <laughs> But it's so nice to see you, beautiful. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. It's it's a crazy world out here. So I'm trying to just stay safe. All these masks, gloves in the car. I know. (laughs) But what's up? How are you coping with this this COVID-19? How is this changing your your day-to-day? It really hasn't changed much. Like a lot of people keep asking me this question. Um, I just haven't been going outside, which is crazy to me um and I'm just trying not to lose my mind because I'm so used to going outside and being out and about and running around but um I've just been able to accomplish more stuff like indoors like catch up on school assignments that was due um the and just really be more creative I've done TikToks which is funny I like start I like remember not liking the app I thought it was the worst thing ever now I'm kind of addicted and I, and I do like a lot of TikToks today I've been shooting YouTube videos like crazy like I was telling Anthony I've been doing many photo shoots I was like I might become a great job Anthony just saying that's not that's not funny that's not I'm just like writing um shows and movies so yeah I've been saying my being my creative self writing music and stuff um yeah. just not going out <laughs> Yeah. So Anthony can tell you, I recently joined TikTok and I had the same sentiments as you. I was like, this is pouring another musically app. I am addicted. Like I was up last night, half asleep, trying to learn this dang, like get it down perfect. Like learn. (laughs) And it's so funny. So I completely feel you on that. Um, I don't want you embarrassing us if you're going to do TikTok videos. You got to be good. (laughs) It has to be on point. 
but no, I figured, um, you know, someone in your profession that this time frame wouldn't affect you probably in a negative, it wouldn't affect you in a negative way in the sense where you're a creative. And I think with your career, with moving around so much, let's say you're bouncing from LA, Atlanta, New York, mm -hmm. premieres, all types of stuff. Like this is given, I know for me as an entertainment journalism, like journalist, it's giving me time to like stop mm -hmm. and and reflect and like look at my work and, and analyze my work and think about new work so i'm sure your creative juices are like probably flowing and you're probably connecting with people so much more yeah i i really am like at first i was kind of like did i like lie to myself like when this first started i was just so relaxed and i wasn't doing anything and i'm like what am i doing i need to like do something why am i not doing anything but i just kind of got used to how relaxing it is like this is the longest that i've ever been home yeah and and it was like weird at first and I was super duper relaxed and I'm like why am I not working why am I not doing anything and then like about two weeks into quarantine I slowly started getting back to myself I know I've had this like writer's block that I've been in for the past couple months and it just totally went away um once wow. I really started to allow myself to just be creative again and fall in love with all these things like in a whole new way and really just really 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 be appreciative of yeah. everything that I'm so used to doing and like now that I can't do it to that extent anymore it's just giving me time to really like reflect and fall back in love like fall not that I fell out of love but fall even more in love with the yeah. things that I love doing and, and really like set time aside for each thing yeah and I think it's, it's funny you put it that way because I can imagine with your line of work, when you first start things that are, are like acting, modeling, media, you do it because you love it and it mm -hmm. gives you like, a, it fills you. But when it gets to the point where, you know how like when you start, it probably doesn't feel like a job because it's fun. But then when it starts to feel like a job because it's very strenuous hours and it's demanding, th that takes the fun out of it. Mm -hmm. a little bit you know what I mean so then now yeah, it's probably I know like, what you mean. you're probably still and like being able to like wow this is why I love this you know mm -hmm. so that's awesome yeah. oh however I don't think I really felt like that way about it. like anything that I've done has felt like a job it's mm -hmm. just like really just getting like to really like sit down and reflect and go like man I really miss this <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah so it wasn't like that but I, I get like exactly what you're saying and where you're coming from you've been homeschooled Mm -hmm. um two so two questions because i know now and i, I gotta say because i always you always be my little sis but you know you recently you did you know you, you know you didn't you know cross over the threshold you're, you're you're grown grown up now and i know you're applying you know go, schools and colleges and things like that which is going to be a huge difference from being at home you know you get mm -hmm. into those uh you know lecture halls at schools mm -hmm. um is that something that concerns you as you know especially seeing what you know has been going on with the coronavirus yeah it does but one thing that i've been doing when i have been looking at universities and colleges i want something that's not like necessarily full-time where i have to be there every day it's something where i can go in the classroom but i can also do it online because yeah. of my demanding work schedule um but going in a classroom like after this it's def it's definitely going to freak me out it's going to take me some time and I know that a lot of like universities and colleges, they're even delaying it. Like mm -hmm. how they were like, okay, maybe September, October. And now some of them are like 2021, which I really appreciate because it's going to take people like a lot of time to get over this. Um, but yeah, it does change my perspective a lot on like going in a lecture hall right now. I know for a fact, I know kids touch everything walking into classes. I just, I can remember that. You touching all the chairs and the desk and whatnot, so I know it's going to be a little crazy. Do you think we'll see a rise in homeschool kids after this? I think for sure. I mean, it's, it's <coughs> funny seeing, like, people's reaction. Like, um, my yeah. eight-year-old cousin, he's, like, at first, when he first started, he's like, oh, I hate this, I hate this. But I'm like, hey, you don't have to go to school. Like, this kid hates school with a passion. So, like, when he started doing it at first, he was like, I don't like this. This is hard. But um, literally, like, over the last week, he's like, I love this. I want to be homeschooled. I want to be homeschooled. And then just seeing, like, the response online, so many people are like, oh, my God, I love online schooling. I want to be homeschooled. And to me, I'm just like, wow. Like, I've been doing it for years, so it doesn't shock. But I'm glad that everyone else is kind of jumping on the bandwagon because the cool thing about it is you really get to go 
at your own pace. Not saying you have to go slow, but I feel like school sometimes holds kids back. Yeah. And they'll be learning the same thing for like three, four, five years. And it's like, what's the point? Then they get to like high school or college and it's like, wait, I never learned this. Mm-hmm. So I think, and they're not exposed to a lot of things like far as their history or their culture. Um, yeah. And that's one of the great things about online schooling and about homeschooling in general. You have more time to learn about everything. You're not just stuck on one topic for yeah. like your, for all of elementary school or middle school or junior high or high school. Um, you really get to explore different things. So um, I'm glad that more people are opening up to it. And um, I know that it's going to, like, a lot of people are really going to love it, and it's going to be a huge adjustment for a lot of people. But um, I'm glad that people are really broadening their horizons and seeing it's no different from going to a regular school. You're just at home. You're comfortable. And when you're in a comfortable setting, you'll be able to learn more. Yeah. The pressure is probably different or the lack thereof. So that's, yeah, that's awesome. Um, Let me ask you with you, you know, being part of a historic show like Power at such a young age, and then in combination of being homeschooled, how has that affected just your youth and a sense of like your social life? Because Mm -hmm. obviously not many people your age can relate to being, you know, part of a successful franchise like that. And then also being homeschooled where, you know, you're missing out on certain things but then you're gaining so much other things but how do you feel about about both of those those aspects um I think people think like there's this huge misconception that like homeschool equals no social life but honestly I think I've had way more of a social life by being homeschooled and by being in so many different things because besides acting I play instruments I took dance classes I competitively figure skated and so many other things. So I got, I was exposed to many different people and I got to make like tons of friends that I probably would have never even got a chance to make friends with if I went to public school or private school. If I wasn't in a homeschool setting, it really just exposed me to more. And being on such like, and it feels weird to call it iconic because it feels like we just shot the first episode yesterday, (laughs) but such an iconic um, pop culture show it really, it, it made me realize how small the world was. Like when the show first came on, I didn't know that we had fans in Britain and, and I'm just going to say all of Europe because they really love the show, like Spain, Britain, Paris, everywhere. They love the show. And then here and in Africa. So it was like so crazy to see that. And people approach me and they're like, Hey, like I'm from Nigeria we love the show so it really just broadened like my whole aspect on life so yeah but, um yeah you kind of you hop back in first of all you know your your death was probably one of the biggest moments on television period but then you managed to to, to get back on as a ghost in the last mm-hmm. uh season of, of power as well uh when when did they decide that they were going to do the whole ghost uh scenario Honestly, I think they decided, I don't know when they decided to do it, but I'm going to give you like two answers. I think they decided when they decided to kill like Raina off. And even my last day on set, like everyone was really emotional, but they kept saying, we'll see you soon. And I'm like, why are these people saying they're going to see me soon? They're not going to see me soon. Like I had, like, I had no idea. And my mom was like, you're going to be such a big star. Don't even worry about it. And everyone's like, you're going to be so big. Don't worry about it. And they're like, this is not our last time seeing you, which I know it was my last time seeing everyone because it's such a small industry. And the person who could be like your assistant one day could be the director or the writer or creator of the show the next day. So of a show the next day. So I knew it wasn't like my last time seeing everyone. Um, But I really think they decided the moment they decided to kill Raina off whenever that was that they would bring her back um and like almost every season as a ghost um just because of the sentimental um feeling of it and people they've heard they've heard stories from people that have lost their children and they're like no I still see them I see them every day I get visits from them I can hear them when I fall asleep and I think yeah. if they didn't include that One, the backlash after they killed Raina off was tremendous. (laughs) It was crazy. I didn't think that people were going to go that hard. And, like, people were messaging me. People were sending 
death threats to the studio, to stars, wow. to 50, to Courtney, and like they're all amazing people. No one deserves that. And I think in a way they they like they knew they had that plan in place, but they also were like, okay, maybe we should listen to these people and bring her back. So it happened somewhere in between there. I don't know exactly where for sure. Um, but I just remember um, Courtney Kemp, she was like, this isn't my last time seeing you. You'll be seeing you. You'll be back. She was like, you're family. And I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> and That's, that happened. So. That's so fascinating that uh, people responded like that mm -hmm. so aggressively because you, we know it, it's, it's just, literally a, a storyline. Yeah. So, but that speaks to why people take representation and the perception mm -hmm. of what's out there in pop culture like so serious you know and it yeah. impacts their life personally um how has you know representation just as a young black woman in this industry have you had ever had any situations where you felt like growing up maybe not seeing black women in certain roles or seeing them in certain roles motivated you or made you feel um just discouraged you know what i mean from just your experience yeah. on set or casting not having a lot of representation growing up really lit a fire under my butt. Like when I was three years old, I would tell my mom, I'm like, mommy, I don't see kids who look like me on Sesame Street. I was like, I don't see that many. I want to do that. I want to, I want to go on there. And um, as I got older, I kept saying it. So like when I was three years old, I told her on New Year's Eve, I was like, how come you don't want me to be on TV? I really want to be on TV. And she was like, it's not that. It's just, I don't know what to do. And she was like, you know what? Your birthday's in a couple months. When you turn four years old, we'll figure out what to do. We'll put you in it, see how you like it. And really, representation was the fire that lit yeah. my career, that started my career. I, I didn't see a lot of that growing up, so I wanted to do that for someone else, for some other little Black girl out there. And yeah. just, like, when I hear, like, girls come up, like, people, like, girls that are way younger than me that watch Power, and I'm like, you shouldn't be watching that, but you know what? I don't <laughs> care. Do you? Because <laughs> that's your business. <laughs> So, like, when I see them and they're like, hey, you really inspired me to, to be on TV. And it's like, I didn't know we could have that. And, they're, and like, even adults walk up to me and they're like, thank you for representing us. And I'm like, well, thank you. I, like, I didn't see, like, it's always what I wanted, but I didn't know that I, I would ever get that impact one day. So yeah. It's amazing. It's really heartwarming. You no, know, I'm older than you. And, and when I first seen you, you know, it encouraged me, even the whole set of power, really, because mm -hmm. that's why I love 15, what he's done with, with that pop culture show, because he's given opportunity to people that look like us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're from New York, too. And it, there's so many elements of it that, you know, um, it affects so many young people. And yeah. I'm not sure if he has told you about what happened. You know, we had a, a red carpet moment last year that went viral between my interview with Holly Berry and um, I had spoke out on the lack of, you know, social media, or I'm sorry, black media getting um, mm -hmm. good placement and being skipped. Mm -hmm. And Holly Berry, you know, was one, when I was growing up, I used to see her and she broke the barrier for so many yeah. young people. And so for her to receive, you know, it was Anthony and I there, it was, it really changes you, you know, to just see another woman in that position and then turn around and say, hey, you know, I haven't forgotten about you too. So what you're doing is gonna transcend way past even Thank your you. own career, but everyone. So I'm super proud. <laughs> you. you stop pretty much uh, for every fan um, mm -hmm. outside. Yeah. I mean, if you guys, I mean, I'm sure you guys are already following on IG where you got, you post all the different pics. Sometimes it, it be a lot. I was telling him her, her, her dash at the top of her story be crazy, but the dash at the top of your story sometimes be out of this world. Do you um, is that is that something like you're gonna still embrace coming out of this as far mm -hmm. as just being you know up close with the fans? That's something that I'm so open to, and I was actually really bummed out at the end of March and. Um, even this month, like I, you know, I post them at the end of the month. I didn't have anything to post at the end of March, um, which really sucks. And I, I don't have anything to post at the end of this month. And um, it's really upsetting, especially when I get messages from people every day. They're like, oh, I would have loved to meet you. Um, and, you know, like this is usually around the time that I'm doing like fundraisers for March of Dimes where fans come out and where I'm hosting meet and greets and stuff during like spring break and summer break. 
and so many I've get I've gotten so many messages and they're like oh it sucks I won't get to meet you and it it kind of breaks my heart a little bit but I'm definitely still gonna take my fan photos I'm still gonna embrace everyone once this is all over because when they say like you can go back outside you know me Anthony I'm gonna wait like a month or two months before we're going back outside um and I'm gonna be masked up gloved up but um I'm still gonna allow I'm still gonna embrace them and allow them to take pictures and communicate with me yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's good. My mom said we not close. You know, six feet apart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Until no, next year. <laughs> we were talking about how, you know, fans would feel not being able to, you know, get that hug or autograph or picture mm -hmm. with, you know, their favorite celebrity or their favorite athlete or whatever coming out of this. But, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, it's something like I do think that there will be actors and athletes that will kind of be standoffish mm -hmm. after the coronavirus so I do think it's dope that you're actually like you know what now we're gonna I'm gonna still get my pictures in with the fans because I know that that's something you know that one that, that I know you you really love having the fans come up to you yeah. and then same thing with the fans you know they love that interactiveness when I can just walk up to somebody who I really admire I love watching you every week or you know on television or, or in a movie and I can still go and, and get a picture and this and everything is cool yeah. so tell us what is next for you what are I know you spoke a little bit earlier about writing and producing mm -hmm. or directing or you know what what do you foresee you know your uh, of your career um, so before I get into that, um, so what's next question, I actually have a fundraising event on my Instagram live, um, this Tuesday, not today, but next Tuesday coming up, this Tuesday coming up, and it's with Raquel Harris, and we're going to be working out and doing some boxing techniques, um, for March of Dimes for COVID-19 Relief Fund for the Me Too babies, so make sure y'all tune in, spread the word, and um, Anthony, I'll send you the flyer, and, um, please share it. Um, but as far as career-wise, um, knock on wood, some TV shows, some movies coming up, um, but music, there's definitely going to be a lot of music coming out of this whole experience. So that's what you guys can look up, look out for. Oh, music. Okay. Mm -hmm. I know, I know. My mom's like, you can't talk about, I know, I know. I can't talk about like everything coming out, but there's no, be part, don't have to go into detail, just kind of you know, where you plan on, on, on moving your career. So that's awesome. I'm going to cut this part out um, in regards to the, the, the event on Tuesday, and I'm just going to post that clip um, okay. onto, onto our social media and um, onto the, the YouTube channel just so we can get a little extra promo going for the, uh, for the event for next Tuesday. Cool, thanks. Again, now you're coming out mm -hmm. of being a child star, going into being an adult actress. How have I, have you prepared yourself for that transaction, that uh, transition, excuse me, because, um, you know, we had a lot of times, you know, with child stars, they kind of mm -hmm. get stuck in being that child star. So mm -hmm. are you preparing yourself to take on older roles or, you know, how, how, how are you preparing that, that transition? Honestly, for me, there really is like no transition. I've always, like, I've kind of always been ahead of my game ahead of the ball game a little bit when I was younger in this business I had an advantage over a lot of kids my age that were starting out too I could read um, and so I could like read scripts easily and they were like okay well you're so advanced we have to send you out for like older roles sometimes so um honestly the crazy thing about the transition like from child roles to adult roles is there's really no transition because when you're like 18 you're still auditioning for like 14 15 16 yeah. 17 and 18 year old roles and you really don't get to play adult roles like unless you're like tall and you know you look your age but a lot of times i'll walk into a casting and i'm like you look like you're 14 and i'm like no i'm 18 um so i i'm like going up with my age yeah it is and I'm so we got a couple more couple more younger. years of you playing the younger roles yeah a lot more years <laughs> look at her beautiful like can... baby face what she mean <laughs> you're not gonna play somebody's mama right now like <laughs> in the next movie she's gonna play a grandma no <laughs> but until until i'm probably like maybe 25 that's when i'll can you answer this it's my door dash sorry <gasps> but until i'm like sorry my food is here <laughs> until i'm like probably 24 25 that's when i'll really be going out for like adult roles and yeah. roles for my age group well even the, the show on netflix all american i was researching the cast they're all 30 years old 
like and yeah. they're playing they're they're playing high schoolers and the lead actor the lead football player on the team is 29 and then the, the mm-hmm. other uh love just is 31 and i'm like they're playing 17 year olds so i yeah, mean and- i don't even worry i think they're gonna be playing <laughs> <laughs> i know and that's the that is the crazy part about this industry um, it's weird. It's like when you're young, they want you to keep playing these young roles, and when you're older, you they still want you to keep playing young roles. You know, if you're younger, which um, so many actors do, and they're blessed because they just have lots of longevity. But yeah. it's so rare when you find a show, and it's weird. Like when I audition, I'm like, why am I going out for this teenage role? And I know they're gonna pick an adult to play this, but um, the reason they do that is because adults they can work longer hours than child actors, which is the cool thing about being 18. Um, I can work longer hours, <laughs> and um, probably gonna regret that soon. But <laughs> I can work longer hours, which will be fun. Yeah. Um, and that that is why they go older, and like they don't need the parent on set, so mm-hmm. that's why they go older. But I really do commend shows like Stranger Things when they have, you know, like actors playing their age because it's yeah. so rare to see, and it's just a huge win for like child actors and teenage actors like myself. Yeah, and I think it it, it gives um, just a depth in the show when you have older people playing that role because you may have more seasoned actors and then more mm-hmm. youthful ones. And everyone can really truly play their role and also learn from each other. Yeah, uh, what's a what's a piece of advice or guidance that you would give to a young actress that wants to start off with just all the years of knowledge that you've gained? Or maybe something you wish someone told you before you started? Mm. Um, I'd say, like, this is my number one advice for everyone. Do not fall for the scams. So I get so many messages about this. And so many people, they're like, well, I have to pay for my agent and manager. I'm like, you don't have to pay for an agent and manager. You don't have to pay to go out on an audition. Like, those things are free. And people are like, I didn't know. And I'm like, yeah. And that's the, that is so upsetting to me that people are literally scamming these people that just want to live out their dreams. So um, that's my biggest advice. Don't fall for any of the scams. Look yeah. for an agent and manager because if you're doing it all alone and just kind of like going into these open casting calls, yeah, like I said, it's overwhelming. So look for an agent and manager. Look for ones that are relevant and that are representing people that, one, that look like you that are your gender and that have experience working mm. with someone like you and look for, you don't want to go with this super duper big agency that's representing like all these big stars. Cause it's like, there's no room for you, but you don't yeah. want to go with the agency that's representing like a bunch of nobody. So you want to find one that's right in the middle and that has experience. And yeah, that is my advice. That's great advice. I wouldn't have mm-hmm. thought about the gender part huh? of that. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 sorry. And one more thing, you can also consult my mom, Jay. Um, I'll, like, <laughs> I'll, um, Anthony, you can put this together when this is, when you edit this, but um, she does consultants, she does consulting and classes for young actors and actors. Do you want to say it? Would you like to say it? You know, you could text Listen, well, first, okay. <laughs> first, 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 first oh, of all, that's awesome. Your she's, mom. She's, she's my manager oh, already, so I don't, awesome. don't be, don't be sending <laughs> a bunch of people you. to go to her right now, because that's my manager, and I need my time. Jay, he needs your time. Yeah. Time you I'm like, her what's, her Instagram? what's her number? <laughs> oh, yeah, but you can, like, get in contact, like, through my Instagram, the email, and my Instagram, team, Shay, at gmail.com. If you just email and say, hey, I'm reaching out to Jay. So we know it's not an inquiry for me. Just say, hey, I'm reaching out to Jay, Don Jay Hopkins, mom. Um, and I would like to take a consulting class with her or acting class. And yeah. So. That's awesome. You know what's crazy about what you just said, just to speak on, you said it's important to have a manager or agent that the gender part, because um, I was just speaking about this the other day. You know, I'm a young woman gen- entertainment news journalist that mm-hmm. being a woman and being in these spaces, it's important to have, one, the right guidance, but having other women. And I think I didn't realize mm-hmm. that until more recently, you know, being a woman, I've been in situations where it's just, um, I don't know, it's just that you're really blessed that you've had your parents that were really involved, you know, at such a young age and made sure mm-hmm. that, you you know, things that didn't happen and that you yeah. were in a good situation because so many women in this industry deal with, you know, things that happen yeah. with directors, and I've I've experienced a very inappropriate, you know, talent interviewing talent and and just mm-hmm. things that should should have not been even said like right. off camera. 
So um, I actually have a publicist now that's, you know, a woman and she, she thinks of things that only as a woman, you know, even with wardrobe, with my yeah. cool girl, this, you, listen, you looking, you need to fix this. And she keeps it <laughs> all the way. And it's like being, having a woman, it's like, she's so, you know, it's like my mom. Yeah. Looking out for me. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely different when you have like a, a woman representing you or a man representing you. Um, yeah. And I've had um, female agents and managers. And now I have a male manager, but I still have female agents. And the perspective is so like different okay. with some things sometimes, but um, I love them both. I <laughs> treat them for the world, but um, it is definitely to, it's definitely good to have strong females like in your corner, so you can say, "Hey, should I do this or should I go out for this role?" Like, mm-hmm. "Hey, how's this person's track record? Are they the writer? Are they the director? Are they the producer?" So yeah, I, I like totally understand where you're coming from. I want to go back to the to the red card because it's something that we had touched on last week. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as, you know, again, going back to, because I mean, Corona is going to be affecting us for a little while, but, you know, a lot of the times the red carpets are so tight and so compacted yes. to where you can't even, one, you can't even get on the red carpet realistically anyway, but yeah. how, how do you think things will change? One, as far as with the actual actors themselves and doing mm-hmm. these red carpet interviews, and then two, the act, the productions and how they arrange the red carpets because it can't be everybody all on top of each other like that moving forward. I think it's it's definitely going to change a lot, and with the red carpets too, it's just it's kind of like the Hunger Games, like everyone's like fighting for position yes. on red carpets, <laughs> and everyone's kind of like packed in there like sardines. Um, so I think it's kind of going to change the demand a little bit. They're going to put like the higher press um, companies and like the higher photographers and stuff Mm -hmm. there, which sucks for independent um, journalists and independent photographers and videographers. So they're going to put people like Getty at the front. They're going to put like the times they're going to put TMZ. They're going to put all those people in the front and kind of put um, the newer photographers and independent journalists in the back. Um, kind of space everything out so that is gonna totally change red carpets a lot um and it's kind of gonna be like even harder to get a pass um like not saying this is for sure gonna happen I hope that it doesn't happen but then again we do have to make sure that safety is key so um I definitely do see huh oh my nail (laughs) but I definitely do see things changing tremendously and I'm um Sorry, something's something's happening with my family, my crazy family. Um, <laughs> um, but I, <laughs> um, I see it changing a lot, and it definitely it's like you're like I said, you have to fight for a position as is. So you're gonna have to fight like ten times harder. They're gonna be like, well, I have Zendaya, and they're gonna be like, well, I have Beyonce. So it's like, <laughs> it's yeah, yeah, yeah. like well, no, this person's gonna go. How how it is already, but um, not everyone's not going to be so close together they're going to be like okay this person go take the photos do your interviews okay you off now this person it's definitely going to be more spaced out and it's probably going to be a lot more time consuming like because it's so rush rush it's there for you're probably going to have to arrive like five hours before the event to even start the red carpet do you think it'll be harder even harder now than for black media outlets to get those red carpet interviews just because of like you said they're going to push the bigger guys to the front mm-hmm. wait yeah. about trip. sorry i don't interrupt mm-hmm. you no it's fine so trip don't equate bigger outlets to white outlets and don't equate smaller oh, well, outlets to black outlets. okay but go ahead <laughs> right because there are some good media sites out there that are black owned mm-hmm. um so but i i like i get what you're saying um, it definitely is. It's going to be a lot harder because, like I said, people are going to go with the people they know. They're going to go with people like BET. They're going to go with people like, um, oh my God, what's the name of it? Um, oh, American Black Film Festival. They're, yes, they're going to, like, it's it's going to be a lot harder. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's already Hunger Games, but it's just going to be a little bit more competitive. And yeah. of course, importantly, I think that what's going to come out of this whole corona is one people's better understanding of space and cleanliness and yeah you know, all those things and i think that sometimes with celebrities peak fans and press included get a little too comfortable and they get a little too comfortable with not respecting people's personal space and i've seen it on the red carpet i've seen 
I, we were on the carpet um, for John Wick and, and uh, Keanu Reeves was, uh, I remember he had a cold and he was sneezing mm -hmm. and he was like, give me a second to the press because he was literally sneezing. Sne like he's a human and they yeah. people have patients. And I remember this reporter was just, the mic, she was just shoving it in his face and she was getting mm -hmm. so cold. He was like, you, like he, and I felt so bad because the guy was like sneezing with his nose and he was just like, I need a moment. And she couldn't respect that moment or the space. Yeah. So I'm like, you know, I think that what's going to come out of this is space and the proper distance and the proper, mm -hmm. like, respect. So I don't know, hopefully. Yeah, I agree. So no, Definitely. Now, I know, because I know we get, we get close to the hour, but I do, because you guys, you guys have been trying to uh, convert me for the past couple of years uh, to, to, you want you guys to try to get me to go vegan. Mm -hmm. um now with everything now and i've been hearing these rumors about the different things with the meat and all that and people touching stuff do you think there's going to be a big boom uh for veganism coming out of the coronavirus definitely, definitely i'm on it right definitely. now definitely. <laughs> <laughs> because like when this started when like the news like first not i'm gonna not gonna say when it first came out but when people really started taking it seriously and they were like, no, this could possibly, like, be a national crisis. And they, like, alerted everyone on the news. They were like, go and get your groceries and just try and limit the amount of time you're going out. When I went into all my stores that I go in, like, all the vegan stores, Whole Foods, and then even the smaller, um, like, farmer market chains and stuff, there was nothing, there was nothing vegan there, like, whatsoever. I could not even find... I could not find an onion. Like, that's how crazy it was. Everything, all the shelves were clear. So I definitely see, like, a lot of people going vegan, um, especially yeah. now due to this because it came from a bat that fed a cow. And it's so crazy. And a lot of these things, especially preventable diseases, a lot of them stem from animals. And it's because they have all these animals in these terrible conditions and these meat packing plants and and these farms and it's just like if it's if one animal has it it's just going to spread to another animal if they're like this close together so and then eventually it's going to spread to humans so i think um there will be a lot of happier animals that come out of this there will be a lot of healthier people and it's a great way to build your immune system by going vegan and add years to your life so i hope that a lot of a lot more people get educated on it and really start to take it seriously yeah I agree, hundred percent. I I too just started this week just vegetables and and but yeah I've been you know also having fruits and vegetables just because the immunity strength. So I didn't know you were yeah. vegan. Oh. Yeah, I'm vegan. <laughs> Check out my page if you want to see some recipes. If you get bored of eating just like plain fruits and vegetables, <laughs> that's the biggest struggle. Is like I was definitely getting bored, so I'm definitely gonna check out some recipes because yeah. It, you start in the beginning, you start to feel like there's not a lot of options, but there's mm -hmm. plenty, but you know. There are tons of options, like stuff that you pass at the grocery store and you're like, oh, what's that? Like it's nine times out of 10, it's vegan. So definitely check out my page. I have a lot of great brands up there and recipes and you'll find something like Anthony's always like, can you send me a plate? <laughs> <laughs> Especially for people of color. I think that our community is something that I think more than recently we've been in to, we've always been into fitness, but the health part of it and I think part of that is because we you know black don't crack we all look mm -hmm. great or we you know are historically what the, the scraps and things that we used to eat you know for mm -hmm. survival and so yeah. I'm, I love meeting women of color or men of color that are vegan too because it's like that push needs to be pushed in our community yeah it's like you can look good but just because you look good that doesn't mean you're healthy on right. the inside and right. I think a lot of people think like going vegan means that they have to compromise their culture. You can still eat like your cultural foods. You just yeah. really have to research the recipes. And then you kind of, when you're vegan, you get so creative. You're like, well, how can I make this into this? And I suggest checking out Bad Girl Vegan. She mm -hmm. has vegan oxtails, which I was like, what? That's a thing? So wow. they're like, yes, there are tons of things if you just like, look them up and research them and you can even try a bunch of recipes like yourself and, and see if you like it but you can definitely have your cultural foods and still be vegan well 
Well, that sounds awesome. Get up on that uh, IG and uh, find out from Don Shea. Get some, get some uh, recipes and some uh, cooking tips if you're trying to transfer over. I'm, I'm, I'm on it. I'm on it, Don Shea. I'm on it. Okay. I'm going to be trying some new stuff. All right. You got to <laughs> gotta got me. You got to convince me. So I'm, I'm moving forward. I'm going to be, I'm going to get more. I ain't going to jump all the way out the window. I'm going to hold you to it. Don't start. Don't get but, the line. No, I ain't gonna, I, that's what I just said. I ain't going to do it all at once. It's going to take me some time. I got to wean myself off of where it's I'm okay. at now. And then I'm going to get to it. Like, listen, I'm, I'm I eating a whole lot of fruits you and stuff. Vegan, you're going to feel better and you're you're not going to miss any of that stuff. Right. Only, only up, certain man. things you might miss. But. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure talking to you. Thank and you. For me, so I'm definitely a supporter. Thank you. No and problem. Make sure you guys uh, tune in uh, next Tuesday. Uh, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be on there on there as well, rocking out with Don Shea um, on the live for the next uh, charity event. Um, she's she's working with the March of Dimes. Just really quick, Don Shea, give them that info one more time. Yeah. So next Tuesday coming up. Well, this Tuesday coming up, um, April twenty eighth. April twenty eighth. I'm at seven o'clock. I'm doing a live with Raquel Harris. It's gonna be a workout slash boxing technique class. And we're raising we're raising money for the COVID nineteen relief fund for NICU babies um, with March of Dimes. Perfect. All right, we're gonna be locked in. Thank you. And bye. Live from the camp. Bye, the camp. Uh huh. This is Hi, real fans, real talk. talk. Real fans, real talk. We as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk. We the illest of course. Real fans, real talk. We the illest on court. Real fans, real talk. We as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk. Reporting live from the cam. High in demand, so please stand by if you can. What we got is worth a lot, so put a tie in your plans. On court, talk of sports through the eyes of the fans. With Trip Young, Emma Marie, Eric Sanchez. You heard what I said? We elite. Check the latest topics and stay ahead of the beat. Keep us in your top. Uh -huh. we ahead of the Yo, streets. It's Johnny Floss, bringing a different type of blend. Backing up Misfit to make sure y'all tuned in. You gotta watch, this show is one of a kind. Updates on your TV screen from 8 to 9. For the older folks, so even if you're younger, no matter what sport, this show, we got it covered. It's filmed live in the middle of BK, so ain't no better sports show to watch on Thursdays. Real, real fans, show. real talk, we as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, Real talk, we the illus on court. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. What's up, guys? I'm Emerald Marie, and be sure to check us out on the web at realfansrealtalk.com.